Uh, it's Nick for the Run Testers, and this is our first run review of the Reebok Floatride Energy X. So in recent years, Reebok has kind of earned a reputation for producing kind of great value and often quite widely underrated running shoes, uh, kind of the most famous example being the kind of Floatride Energy line, which are really good value daily trainers uh, with the latest version. We've just kind of done our first run review on the channel. They also had some really great shoes in the past in the Run Fast line, which had a Piba based foam and the Run Fast particular shoe I really loved using, a very lightweight but still quite cushioned racing and fast training shoe that kind of fortunately seems to have a little bit disappeared from the line. But in its place, we now have the Reebok Energy X, which is Reebok's first carbon plate shoe. It's just got a four foot plate rather than the full carbon plate. And they build it really as a kind of a long distance racing shoe. So marathon racing and kind of your long distance training. And you can tell by the fact that you know, it's a really quite a big bulky beast um, and it's fairly heavy as well. But once again, it looks like it's gonna be great value. It's 130 pounds in the UK or $170 in the US. Uh, the shoe has a six millimeter drop from heel to toe. Uh, and like I said, it's a little bit heavy. It's 274 grams in my UK size nine, uh, which is 9.7 ounces. You know, that's heavier than, you know, not just kind of top tier carbon racing shoes, but also lots of kind of training shoes out there, which usually kind of hover more around kind of 240 or 250 grams in my size. In terms of the design, this upper is a very kind of very open mesh called Flex Weave, which uh, I think Reebok has used in some of its kind of cross fit training shoes before in the past. Slightly asymmetrical laces, not quite as aggressively cut as things like on the Vaporfly. And then you've not you've got a fairly minimal padding actually around the heel and tongue there. I'll say that like it's a bit kind of sunken into the kind of inside the heel at the bottom there and then it raises you know unnaturally high at the back here but there's not a lot of cushion there considering that this is quite a heavy shoe build for these long distance events in the midsole you've got Reebok's float ride energy foam which is a very good foam I'm not gonna say it's right up there with the very best foams out there but it's always delivered a very you know comfortable protective and energetic ride on daily trainers like such as the float ride energy but this is obviously the first time we're seeing it in such large amounts on a kind of more of a racing shoe then you've got the four foot carbon plate which runs kind of around here and then when it comes to the outsole you've got pretty good coverage i think it's fair to say you've got a large amount of rubber at the four foot there and it extends all the way back to the shoe it's kind of a slight kind of cut out recess there to reduce a little bit of weight but obviously not too much um, but yeah it looks like it's going to grip well and hopefully even though it's not the thickest layer of rubber it will hold up to a fair bit of kind of training as well as racing so the float rider ng x at the moment only comes in whole sizes so uh nor and normally i am a uk size nine um so i've got a uk size nine here but actually in reebok i found that an 8.5 fits me better and with the nine it is a little bit long in the toe box you know I can fold it over a little bit it hasn't really been too baggy around the rest of the shoe even though this upper does look quite baggy i found i had a good kind of mid foot hold on the run today and around the heel and so it being slightly large at the front there hasn't really bothered me at all but yeah for me it does kind of run half size long and if there was an 8.5 that's what i'd be ordering Good morning, another day, another first run. Um, today I'm down on the track for my workout and we're using the Reebok uh, Float Ride Energy X. So we are gonna get to kind of second, third and you know all the rest of the runs and all these shoes eventually for our full reviews. But yeah, at the moment, a lot of first runs going on as lots of shoes are coming out. Uh, today I'm gonna be running two sets of five times 600 meter reps um, with kind of 200 meter jog recovery. Uh, it's nothing too strenuous looking to run kind of around 150, 152 for the reps. Uh, should be okay. Shouldn't be. Too, hopefully, won't be too hard today. Although I do have the sniffles. It's not quite Michael Jordan's flu game, but um, I think it'll be slightly harder uh, for me today. Should be a good test of the shoe at some kind of faster paces to see how it kind of performs. I'll probably check in uh, in between the sets, uh, and I'll see you then. So first set done, like first impressions, this doesn't feel like a, a super shoe, it's fair to say. Like foam has a little bit of bounce in it, I'll say that, but it's not much squish. Don't really get that feeling like you're being thrown forward or sprung forward. And the plate is, you know, it's a lot of foam, like maybe it's a bit buried in there. So you're not feeling a huge amount of toe spring, but I think it's quite a big shoe. Reebok do kind of say it's for marathon distances. This kind of pace is more like around my 5K pace and it's fine for it. It'd be good for training for it, but yeah, it feels quite big and boat-like actually. Uh, the Float Ride Energy 4 I used last week um, feels a bit more nimble and snappy underfoot. This feels like it's going to be a good cruiser and, you know, keep protect the legs, keep you going a long time, a little bit of extra kind of flick from a good foam and, uh, you know, a four foot plate, but it doesn't feel like explosive or propulsive like the kind of top carbon shoes with probably superior foams 
and maybe a full length plate. But yeah, we'll go for the second set. I feel pretty good, you know, they feel like they're certainly protective, these shoes. And I'll see, I'll check in again at the end of the workout. So workout's all done. Uh, rolled for it pretty nicely. Uh, I think I did all the reps in either 149 or 150 and then kicked for a 144 uh, at the end in the last rep. Um, yeah, the pressure of the shoe hasn't changed too much. It's, like, it's a good shoe, like around those reps nicely, but it's big, it's bulky for this kind of work. It doesn't feel very explosive or anything like that. So, you know, it's not gonna let you down. It'll be a good sort of training shoe for this kind of thing. But yeah, it's probably geared more towards long, hard efforts. So that's what I'll try and do in kind of future runs. I will say that, like had a, had a reasonably nice roll through, I'd say that. Um, I'm generally a heel striker and a few of those reps I was probably running like that, quite cruising along, but I was on my toes for a few of them as well. and. Didn't feel like I was getting a load more explosive from the plate in either way. Like it, it felt, you know, quick and comfortable, but big and yeah, cruisy. Definitely a cruisy shoe, I think. Looking forward to cruising in it some other time. Um, but yeah, so first impression is that, yeah, it's not sort of to come in and knock all the top tier carbon shoes off their perch for 130 pounds, but it could be a solid option for training. So yeah, early verdict on the Flight Rider Energy X is it's, you know, it looks like it could be a good value shoe, but it's not gonna, not gonna change the world for 130 pounds. I'd say actually there's a lot of kind of plated training shoes out there already, you're kind of not too far off this price. That would probably be ahead of it, I'd say, in terms of just weight and kind of feel and it kind of, for, especially for faster rep efforts, things like, you know, Stalking Endorphin Speed always. Um, but the Hocker Rocket X, for example, is 140. And I'd say that's got a bit more going for it than this shoe, I'd say with a full length plate and probably a slightly more aggressive rocker. The, uh, the foam here, like it feels, you know, on the Flight Run Energy 4, it feels good. You know, it feels like really good value and a good phone for lots of training. But when you're thinking about carbon shoes, I don't think it's got that kind of explosive feel that you get from lots of the kind of top foams out there. Uh, and a lot of those foams are drifting down now towards kind of uh, training shoes. Another interesting shoe, I think, in this category will be the, Ske uh, the Skechers Razor XS2, which has a four foot kind of winglet plate, I think. Now that's a really light shoe with a very good foam. It probably won't be as comfortable and protective as this, but it'll probably be a better kind of fast trainer would be my guess. Haven't tried it yet, but the, even the original Razor XS uh, without a plate, you know, felt very fast and good for reps while still being quite comfortable. This definitely feels geared more towards those kind of longer events and I think it'd be a really nice long run shoe, almost similar maybe to something like the Hocker Carbon X2 potentially. Uh, so that's kind of what I have in mind. It's got a kind of big boaty feel where it rocks very nicely through your, your foot strike and um, keeps you going and protects the legs, but yeah, it's not explosive and stuff like that. So yeah, looking forward to getting out some long runs in it. that's it guys that's our first run review of the Reebok Float Ride Energy X uh, let us know what you think in the comments are you going to be checking this out is this going to be like a nice training partner to your Float Ride Energy 4 uh, please like subscribe ring the little bell so you get notified when we do some more shoe reviews get some actual full reviews um, and yeah we'll see you next time